So first and foremost, allow me to ask uh, our great leader, uh, the ranking member in, in health in the state senate side, uh, the, the champion on the state senate side, as mentioned, oh, the second most of any state senate district in the, in the state, Senator Gustavo Rivera, to make comments at this time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Michael laid it out. Let me talk a little bit about my district. There was an article a couple of weeks ago in the New York Post. I'm sure that you all saw it. This article listed all these different failing schools in the entire city, including 12 of them in the district that I represent. Now, we did a little bit of math, and we found out that of those 12 schools, they are owed $131 million. Hace un par de semanas hubo un, una, eh, un artículo en el New York Post que dijo que había unas una escuelas que están fallando en toda la ciudad. Y en mi distrito solamente son 12. Y estas 12 hicimos un poco de matemática. Y vimos que se le debe 131 millones de dólares. Now, seven of these schools I've visited myself in the last couple of years as I've been a senator. So I made it a point to call these principals and ask them, could you have used these $131 million? Yo llamé a siete. Yo he visitado personalmente a siete de estas escuelas. Y le llamé a estas escuelas y le pregunté a los principales si ellos pudieran utilizar 131 millones de dólares. And the answer was clear. Maybe we could have used it for tutoring. Maybe we could have used it for after school. That's right. Maybe we could have used it for books. Maybe we could have used it for resources. Maybe we could have used it for extra teachers. And all of these resources, that's what we're talking about. This article and the report that the article was talking about ignored the realities in the districts that we represent. We are in need, and we are in need because the state has not made good on a debt that we have to the schools. It's that simple. El hecho es que estas necesidades van directamente por una deuda que el Estado le tiene a estas escuelas. So, we are here together for all over the Bronx, saying with one clear voice, these resources are necessary if we get them, when we get them. That's right. When we get these resources, they're going to go to the right things. They're going to go to the right schools. And they're going to be used for the resources that are necessary to make sure that these schools will be successful. We stand together to make sure that that happens, and that's exactly what we will do. Thank you so much. Yes, 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 CFE. Fun CFE. Fun CFE. Fun CFE! Fun CFE! Fun CFE! Assemblymember Jose Rivera for comments right now. Assemblymember Rivera. Yes. I want to begin by uh, following the lead of uh, Senator Gustavo. For all you youngsters, you heard us, uh, 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 Senator Rivera speak in a language that was uh, created right here in the Bronx. It is called Spanglish. <laughs> For you students, so that you can know where it, where it came from. Right here in the Bronx, in el barrio, barrio de la ciudad nuestra, en esta ciudad. I want to express my gratitude to Assemblyman Blake. I want to say thank you to those who, who elected him, who sent him to Albany. And I'm going to share my experience with this young man. Two days ago, we met with the governor. Two nights ago, the, the, people, the members that used to here, we met with the governor. And we share and we let him know that it looks like this year, we're drawing the line in the sand. A little bit of history. I quite often say I would not be standing here if it was not for Rosa Park, who refused to sit in the back of the bus. Because Rosa Park refused to sit in the back of the bus, I dare say, and I love to say, that today the Bronx is not only sitting in the front of the bus, providing leadership, but with our Speaker Carl Hasty and with Assemblyman Michael Crespo. In, 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 the, in the assembly and as Bronx County leader, we are all now in the front of the bus. Right and we told the governor, we're moving with this bus and our drivers, we're moving forwards and you have to give us our money right. because we're not going to wait anymore. That's right. That's right. That's right. So we're throwing the line in the sand. We want the money that we're entitled to. 
and if we can pick his pocket and get more, that we are gonna do. Thank you very much. He, he broke out of his shy shell right there. That's good. That's good. That's good. Next, want to make sure we continue this. Uh, uh, another great champion in, in education uh, who, who's fighting for us, Assemblyman Luis Sepulveda. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You can see here on my chart, even though I'm at the bottom of the chart, it's still almost $32 million. Now, I represent a very diverse district. It has people that, that need assistance with English or second language. They need assistance with math. Uh, in my district, only about 61% of the students are graduating from high school. Now when you couple that what we're doing lately, where we see that an overwhelming number of our 16 and 17 year old kids are being sent to prison. An overwhelming number of our kids are going in the wrong path. What can $31 million do for these kids? You know, $31 million can fund a lot of other programs, music, art, $31 million can fund giving children who, when they come to school, that lunch or their breakfast, that free lunch or breakfast sometimes, is the only meal that they have for a good part of the day. And so we're going to do everything possible to get not only our $31 million, but everything that's owed to the Bronx, because it seems like when you think about asthma, when you think about health, we're at the bottom. And unfortunately, see now that when it comes to education, they're also treating us like we're at the bottom. Right. So I am very proud to join my colleagues here for the fight that they're doing, to making sure that we get our CFE money. Yes. I'm very proud of the speaker who's pushing for us to get the CFE money. Yes. Right. I'm very proud of the work that Mike Blake, a new assemblyman, who's pushing, who's taking the fight primarily for the members in the, uh, in the Bronx. And we're taking his lead to make sure that CFE is funded adequately yes. so that our kids get the money that they deserve in education. Yes. 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 Para mí es un orgullo estar aquí hoy con mis amigos de la Asamblea para asegurar que los fondos que, le, que el Estado de Nueva York le debe a los muchachos, a los estudiantes de nuestra comunidad para educación. En el distrito mío son 31 millones de dólares. Con esos fondos pueden fundar muchos programas para nuestros estudiantes, programas académicos, programas que asisten a los niños a conseguir un almuerzo, un desayuno por la mañana. Eh, estamos en una época donde una gran parte de nuestros niños de 16, 17 años eh, van a la cárcel porque no tienen programas educativos para ayudarlos antes o después de las clases. Así que estos fondos, 31 millones y más de medio billón de dólares para el condado de Bronx enteros, es sumamente importante para fundar adecuadamente a nuestros estudiantes para que puedan eh, educarse y, 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 comen, y convertirse, convertirse en personas productas en nuestra sociedad. Así que estoy orgulloso de estar aquí con mi colega de la Asamblea, mi colega del Senado, para asegurar que los fondos que son, que le deben a los estudiantes aquí de Nueva York, de Bronx, eh, sean eh, eh, recaudados aquí para que puedan fundar adecuadamente a nuestros estudiantes. Muchas gracias. When, when the report came out <coughs> saying failing schools, we, we reject that language. It's, 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 it's absolutely unacceptable. If it's a struggling school, a school that needs help, a school that needs support, but we're not going to tell our young people that they're failing. That's not going to be the language we use for them. And for someone like me who went to BS79, which was in a school called Savage Inequalities, I always say you don't want to be in a place where they say that's a savage or that's, that's failing. Now, one of our colleagues here has the great honor of representing the, the Eagle Academy, which is the, the, the cornerstone of what we're doing for black and Latino boys in the Bronx and throughout our communities. And we're grateful for him as another champion in this fight. I want to bring up now Assemblyman Victor Pachado. Thank you, Assemblymember Blake, and I want to thank you for your leadership and pushing this idea and pushing this forward. And I know that with your leadership and all of our colleagues here assembled, we will make sure that CFE is not fully is not only fully funded, but that our children will get the resources that they need to get a full and high quality education. As the Assemblymember said, 
We are here to demand what is owed to us. Right. And the fact of the matter is, when we need to find tax breaks for millionaires, we find the money. When we need money for our children to be able to, be, uh, to get a meal, to have after school programs, to have UPK, it's a, it's a fight, it's a struggle. What I can say, and it can be, it cannot be disputed, every single dollar that's invested in education, you get three dollars back. That's a fact. And the fact of the matter is that we have to fight for this money, it is a shame. It makes fiscal sense, it makes economic sense. And the fact of the matter is, regardless of where you come from, regardless of the color of your skin, you are entitled to have a high quality education, right. have all the resources that you need, and every single support structure that you need in order to, to, to be successful in life. These children, we, myself, um, my, my colleagues, not too long ago, we were in your shoes. I know it's cold out here, so I want to make sure that I keep it brief. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you guys deserve the education that any other ind individual student, either here, Westchester, Erie County, and Schenectady, wherever it is, deserve. So the fact of the matter is, we're here out in this cold fighting for an issue that we deserve. And again, we deserve this money so that you guys can get the adequate education that you need. Thank you, and we'll continue this fight until CFB is fully funded. Thank you so much. We have one more of our, our colleagues in the assembly uh, who, who's here for remarks. And, and just again, we just want to put this in perspective so everyone can appreciate this. $503 million owed to the Bronx. $503 million owed to the Bronx. And you look at these rankings here, it is our rankings here in the city. And for someone who has been a champion in saying that what's happening for our young people and being schooled in trailers and the absolutely deplorable conditions is unacceptable. When we think about what we can do with CFE funding, that's one of the changes that can happen. I want to bring up now Assemblyman Mark Jonah. Mark. Good morning and first let me say I proudly stand by with all my colleagues in government and all of you today to do what is morally right and legally obligated that we fully fund CFE to New York City schools. The borough of the Bronx has for too long been taken for granted that one billion dollar down payment in CFE will make sure that these doors not only stay open but stay open longer and the battle of our second class students, those students that have to take classes in trailers, is an injustice, it's immoral, and wrong in every manner. So this money that we're required to collect on behalf of our school children, the truth of the matter is our children aren't failing, we fail them. So it's time for right. government to do what's right by each and every one of them. We can't ask them to dream big if we don't give them the ability to dream. We can't expect them to be tomorrow's leaders if we don't give them foundation to grow on. Education is first and foremost our priority, and with my colleagues and our speaker, we're going to do what we need to do, and that is educate our kids and give them the proper education that they need. Thank you.